Tuesday, everyone. I am Johanna Cook, Mama Cuisine, and this week's edition of Ask Mama, where you send in your cooking questions on Facebook, Twitter, or even emails at info at mamacuisine.com with the subject title, Cooking Questions, and I make sure I get them answered for you. This week, now this is just our second episode, and this is a new series that I'm doing, and it's actually really cool. I really just want to share any knowledge that I know, and if you have a question that I'm not sure about, I'm going to make sure to ask all the resources that I have and get that answered for you. Cooking is all about sharing and learning continually, and I really think that's what makes the best cooks. If you're always wanting to learn, always willing to ask questions, and this is really where the series came about. Now this week we have two questions. Now excuse me, my voice uh, sounds crazy because I'm battling a little bit of a cold. It's fall here in Chicago, it's cold, and if you know anything about Chicago weather, it could turn on you that quickly. <laughs> and I must have went out the house one day without a thicker sweater or jacket, and anyway. I'm sorry if I'm a little bit hoarse um, this week. But our first question is from Shannon. Actually, the, both these questions are from Facebook, which is really cool. Shannon asks, my cheese sauce from macaroni and cheese keeps turning out grainy. Am I putting too you know, much flour? I personally don't put flour in my macaroni and cheese. I think it, nor, it just naturally gets thick. The sauce gets thick of all the cheeses that I put in and the consistency of cheeses. One of the things that I think is happening here is that if you're making a roux, you're you know doing your flour and butter um, and you're making your roux in the bottom, if you're putting in your milk straight from the fridge um, and it's cold or even room temperature, there's something about the heat and then the milk scalding that may um, cause your sauce to be grainy. So what I suggest is if you're starting off with flour and butter and you're making a roux, make sure that you're gently heating your milk up to temp um, in a little sauce pot next to it so that when you're adding it to the already hot pot, it's not scalding your milk, which may be contributing to the graininess um, of your cheese sauce. So definitely try that, because the way I make my mac and cheese, like I said, I don't use flour, and I gently put, you know, I put the cold pot with the cold milk and bring it up to temperature slowly. It's like a soft, um, gentle heat. And then I add the cheeses, which I actually add a little bit of flour in with the cheese. Like I shred the cheeses and kind of toss it with maybe a couple tablespoons of, of flour. Um, but I don't actually make a roux for it, so that may be it too. And also the milk that you're using, make sure you're using, I mean mac and cheese is all about being rich and cheesy, so make sure you're using whole milk. I like to even add a little bit of heavy cream, <laughs> just a little bit to again add to that richness. Mac and cheese is supposed to be that way, so you can't really cut quarters with that. But I think with the graininess, try that if you're not already trying it, Shannon. Try, if you're making a roux, heat up your milk first before you're adding it to your pot. Because if it's cold, um, you know, the milk being cold and the pot being really hot scalds the milk and it may be contributing to the graininess. So let me know. Try that out. Come back to me and let me know if that works better. If you have your tips, any one of you out there for mac and cheese and how to make, you know, if you've ever come into that situation where you're, um, cheese sauce is grainy, what did you do? What did you find works best to get away from that? Share it with us with the hashtag AskMama ask on Twitter. Share it with us on Facebook or even email it to me at info at mamacuisine.com. Our next one is from Nikki, also on Facebook. She says, I'd love to see one pot meals, not do this, Set aside, then do this and strain this and drain that and set aside over and over. Maybe it's not a question per se, but I really love it nonetheless. No, it isn't a question, but I do see what you mean. Where it's a true one pot meal, and actually you come to the right place. Mama has some really great one pot meal recipes and I'll share that with you 
here are a few right now that I want you to check out. Make sure you log on to MamaCuisine.com, find those recipes of one pot meals, Nikki, and um, hope you give them a try because it really is easy, right? On a busy weeknight, it's really hard to cook where there's so many multiple steps. Um, one pot meals are great where you can just kind of toss everything together at least minimal steps as possible. Very, very simple steps. Um, so definitely give these recipes a try. I hope you give them a try. Let me know how it works out for you. The slow cooker is the best one pot meal maker, I think. Because you can even put stuff there that's frozen and eight, ten hours later it's like perfectly done. So the slow cooker is definitely great. And if any of you out there have great slow cooker recipes, let's help Nikki out. Send them to us with a hashtag AskMama on Twitter or share it with us on Facebook as well. That is this week's episode of Ask Mama. Make sure that you go ahead and send me your questions so that I can get them answered for you every single week on Tuesday right here on the Mama Cuisine channel and on MamaCuisine.com. Make sure you send them. We'll see you again next Tuesday right here. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching. Ask Mama. See you next time.